Hi, this is Marcia. Welcome back to Sunshine Homemaker. So happy that you're going to be here with me today. And on my channel, it's all about learning how to live a happy life using homemaker skills and taking some of what is from the past and applying it to now. So that is... Um, what today's lesson is going to be about. All right, let me see where I'm at in the frame. Make sure you're seeing everything. Okay. So we're talking about meal planning when you have food allergies and sensitivities and mast cell activation syndrome and the rotation diet. All right, so I do this every Monday. And I've made a few of these videos before, but I thought let's get delve in a little bit deeper and talk about why it's so important to, when you have mast cell activation syndrome, to rotate your food. And I'm not really seeing people talk about that on their channel. They're showing what they're eating, but they eat the same thing every day. And you only way you're going to know what you can eat is if you get the IgG, IgA blood work done. So this is accurate. I've done it myself, and it, it was after 16 years of having Lyme disease and knowing that I had food sensitivities and allergies with the Zyto testing that I finally decided, okay, let's get the blood work. And then that showed, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that yes, things that I already knew that I was having a problem with, but it allowed doctors to see that yes. And then with the mast cell activation syndrome, if you ha know a doctor that knows what that is, okay, now it's a, <laughs> you've got a, a whole new um, avenue of help because any foods that are high in histamine is what we're going to react to and that's what was happening to me. I kept telling doctors I'm having a hot flash when I eat and I'm in menopause so they thought it was menopause and nobody ever stopped and said oh well you know what it's mast cell activation syndrome it's foods with histamine let's just take all the histamine foods out of your diet and let's see how that works. Did anybody ever do that? No! So it wasn't until I was talking to a lovely doctor Kristen Ryman, who has had Lyme disease three times herself, and I wish that I would have met her years ago and would be able to follow her protocol, but now my body is at a point where I can no longer handle supplements of any kind, especially herbs or even a digestive enzyme, a probiotic. My body is just something got kapooey in there and it doesn't want anything, but at least I'm okay. It's, it's stable. We're good. I can eat. <laughs> I'm gaining weight. So we're all good. I'm happy with that. And I feel like I'm in remission on a lot of different um, areas with my Lyme disease. I'm only having to take two products and I've eliminated like 10 from 10 to, to 15 different products and taking pills every meal and having to live my life around pills that I no longer have to do that. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. My husband says it's a blessing in disguise what happened to me. I won't go into details about that, of how um, all of that came about, but um, it was just basically being given herbs and supplements and remedies for 16 years. And even when it's natural products, it was overload for my body. So um, now I'm at the point where I just, I'm back to where I was before Lyme disease. And I haven't even had to go to the doctor with other than a chiropractor <laughs> and um, the dentist. So other than that, you know, once I get all those dental uh, issues resolved, then I won't even, other than my cleanings, you know, every four months, then I'll be good to go. So I am really, really thankful that I am at a place now that I never thought I was going to be at. So let's jump right into this food rotation diet. And I was already filling in here, and I just wanted to show you how a food rotation diet works and why with mast cell activation syndrome it is so important. Because we have food sensitivities and food allergies. And if you don't know, like I said, what those are, you need to get your blood work done. IgG, IgA, I think there's even an IgE. So just get every Ig whatever <laughs> you can get. And then you'll have comparisons on all those foods. And um, there's two different levels. So I have two under the IgG, IgA, and then two under... Um, and then all the food groups. So there's like there's a lot of food groups that they do it in. So just just spend the money. It is expensive, but just spend the money and get every food group that you can. 
There is a doctor here in Florida, but he charges a thousand dollars. I mean, it's just like crazy. And then his appointment is like four hundred dollars, and he's and then he wants to take a lot of vials of blood. It was just crazy, and I said no way. So I found a different doctor. I only needed to have one eight. What is it milliliter? I think it is of the you know blood drawn, and it was it was enough enough of a that for me. So when you're dealing with food sensitivities and food allergies and you want to rotate your foods because especially when we have mass activation in the histamine because that histamine builds up in our system so now I understand what was causing the issue and then that builds up inflammation okay so we want to make sure that we're not doing that to ourselves. and the way to eliminate that and how to get it to be calmed down and eventually your system will work it work itself out is less that you can take supplement wise um, medication wise the better so go to your doctors and say what do I absolutely need and try not to let them pile you up because they will just for the money um, sad to say but that, that is the truth and um, after 16 years of going to these doctors I can tell you and I've only found one natural alternative doctor. I don't know if he considers himself functional medicine. I will have to look him up. And then Eric is his first name, but I can't remember his last name. So I think he's from New Zealand. And he is here on YouTube. And he talks about mast cell activation syndrome and uh, uh, candida. His big thing is candida, which I don't have. Um, they, you know, that was one thing. I mean, when I did uh, stool testing and things, it's like I was so happy to see they had gotten all the Issues, the parasite issues resolved, the candida issues resolved, I don't have any dysbiosis, which I never did, but, um, uh, you know, just malabsorption, I had that, so that seems to be resolved, it's just now I have some other, which I had a small intestine issue since childhood, and I don't know what that's, what's causing it anymore, but anyway, so when you have, you want to be on a four-day rotation food diet, okay, and with anything, so Truly, product-wise, uh, other than water, beverage-wise, and food-wise, every type of food group, you want to be on a four-day rotation diet. So what does that mean? That means if you eat eggs on Monday, then you want to count four days out. One, two, three, four. But then on day five is when you add that food back in. Okay, so I was doing it wrong. I was counting one, two, three, four, and then on this day I was adding the food back in, and I was still having issues, and we couldn't figure it out. Well, then I got to a different doctor, and he was more into this whole rotation thing and intestinal, and he said, no, you got to do it, you know, this is the way I just counted it. So one, two, three, four, and then on day five, you can add that food back in, and boy, what a difference. I turned a corner. Everything just started calming down. And so it was just, it was happy days, just happy days. And then for me, I can do extra virgin olive oil. So I don't know what, if you're, if you're good with olive oil, again, check with your doctor, talk to your doctor, get I got with a dietitian, but I knew I was good with, with the olive oil based on my IgG, IgA blood work testing. And so um, here I am, I'm, I'm writing in all my foods. So I use three different color inks one for breakfast one for lunch one for dinner okay so we're on the lunches which is pink ink this week so I kind of I, I mix it up too I don't I don't want it to be boring okay so turkey's over here now my breakfast I have six foods I can rotate lunch and dinner are only five foods which is good though five foods are good so that's one two three four five so then lamb up here goes over here again and then the white sweet potato and then over here is buffalo, which I have to find some vegetables that I can add in. I'm, I'm lacking on my number of vegetables. Okay, so now let's go to dinner, which is purple ink this week. And we have back up here. Okay, so we have black IP this morning. And then we're having lamb and white sweet potato, and we're going to have haddock for dinner. And then tomorrow is my yummy bread. I'm, I'm just like egg, amaranth, 
and butternut squash bread. Absolutely glorious. And let's see, where are we? Okay, then swordfish is here. And I don't know, I might put the orange sweet potato. I have carrot. I try not to do two of the same color vegetable in a day. And since carrot is a little bit higher on glycemic, sweet potato is a little bit middle for me. Okay, and then we want, okay, oatmeal. This is another lovely day that I enjoy. Oatmeal. When did we have that? Saturday. Zucchini. <clears throat> and then brown rice pasta and yellow squash. Okay. And what I do when I make mine, which I'll go over this with you and tell you how what I do. Okay, so the lamb, so had it goes down here. I'll just share some recipes with you real quick. And then the egg and amaranth bread again here. And the amaranth, you know, because I have like a, from the food sensitivity court, <laughs> realm, whatever you want to identify it, um, I get eczema on the ears and the face. Red blotches on the face, eczema on the ears. And what cured, resolved the face issue was drinking natural electrolyte water. Okay. That means it's not manufactured. It's not water that's been electrocuted and electrolytes put in it <laughs> or minerals added into it. It is natural from the spring. So I, my husband happened to find that water. And um, they make it in three different areas of the United States. And we get ours here on the East Coast, and that water absolutely agrees with me. The water from the West Coast is from volcanic minerals, and I cannot drink volcanic minerals. So you could get it delivered to your home, but because of you can't pick which spring it's going to come from. So thank goodness they deliver it, the, <laughs> the one that's the closest to us, from Tennessee to our, our little state here in Florida. So how I cook my food, let's go over this. Okay, so all of my legumes, black eyed peas, all fresh, dry, organic, and I buy them at um, in bulk and from the best prices online that I can find. I soak them overnight. I put a pound in a bowl, fill it up with purified water, and then that bowl goes in the refrigerator overnight with a lid on it. So that, you know, if you leave it sitting out in room temperature, it, you get mold issues starting to uh, could develop or bugs even. You don't even know what's crawling around your house at night. And so um, <clears throat> that's what I do. And then the next morning I get up and I have this colander, a Tupperware colander, and I strain the beans, rinse them really good under tap water, and I just do a little bit at a time. I don't dump a whole pound in. I just do a little bit at a time. And I have one of those Instapot, which mine is called the Crock-Pot Express. And then I dump it all in there. And I bought the stainless insert. I, when you buy the Instapot, I think it comes with a stainless insert. But the Crock-Pot Express comes with a um, non-stick. And I was like, no way, because it's not natural. I'm not using that. And so I bought the stainless steel insert for the Crock-Pot Express off of Amazon, which I absolutely love. And it's just a wee bit taller, but it's okay because the lid still seals and everything still seals. But that was the only the only difference. And so now I'm cooking in my stainless, which is perfect and wonderful. It does tend to stain. That's the only thing I don't like about it. And I was able to get the staining out with baking soda and lemon juice, but then it quit. <laughs> that, that combination didn't even work. And I even tried white vinegar, so I don't know. It's just like a permanent stain now, so I may have to buy a new insert and then ask them, how do you prevent the staining? Because the beans cause the staining. Like when I do the dookie beans, it's like that's like a red bean. It stains it. it just, I don't even understand this. So, um, and it doesn't uh, get any kind of outside discoloration, so it's a nice heavy gauge stainless, but for some reason it doesn't. All right, then my lamb, all of my meats, 
chicken, the poultry, and the, the I, I don't eat beef because of the mast cell activation syndrome and my blood work. So lamb and buffalo and turkey and chicken. Okay, this is what I do. And I just, I'm going to share all these tips with you. So I take the meat, I rinse the chick the poultry, which I buy the, you know, turkey we buy ground, so you don't rinse any of that. Um, you don't rinse ground meat. So you just take the ground meat out and put it in the casserole dish. Then I take purified water and I pour it up where it's even, just with even of the side. And I cut the meat, it's a pound of meat, I cut it into four sections, you know, space it out. Put your water in there, and then I put it in the oven on a 375 degree temperature, and I cook it for 40 minutes, and I have on my oven convection setting, so you push this little button, and then it's like a fan comes on, that's all it means is a fan. And I do not cook in the microwave anymore, I have not used the microwave in probably seven years, because one of my uh, medical doctors who was went to natural medicine told me that microwaving is very bad for you. And I didn't feel good after I got um, Lyme disease when I would, you know, reheat or cook food in the microwave. I just didn't feel good. I noticed I felt a little bit worse than I, you know, had before. And so I do notice a big difference since I started doing that. And even when you cook in the oven or on the stovetop, the, it changes the molecules. It heats up the molecules. It speeds up the molecules in your food. And they're traveling really at high speed. So when you take something off of the stove or out of the oven, you want it to rest for 10 minutes. Now, I've even heard, like, Emeril on his cooking show, and he'll say, like, when he took fish out of the oven, he says, let it rest for 10 minutes. But it's not just because, okay, it continues to cook. No, what's happening is those molecules, and he knows this as, 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 as a professional chef that he is, he knows this, those molecules need to be able to slow down the heat temperature needs to be able to come down because the, the friction of the molecules is what makes that, that heat and the temperature. So you want all that to slow down. So in a microwave, that radiation and those molecules are very harmful. And the stovetop and the oven are a little bit, but not like the microwave. So when I learned all that and my doctor explained that whole thing to me and I said, you know, I thought about that. And um, so I always let everything rest for 10 minutes. And if you use a microwave and you're going to continue to use your microwave, just please start implementing that and let everything rest or cool off 10 minutes. And especially like they tell you, if you're going to heat a baby's formula or something in the microwave, they tell you, let that sit. And that is why. They don't tell you why. <laughs> because, oh, well, it's really hot for the baby. No, it's because those molecules, and I would never, ever, ever heat anything up in the microwave and give it to my child. I'll I just say that right now. So, I mean, like a cell phone, children under 16 aren't supposed to use a cell phone because it damages your brain waves and all those kind of things. They just don't tell you all this stuff. So I'm telling you. And so then that's what I do with my meat. And then when I take it out of the oven, then now let it set for the 10 minutes. And then I put it into the individual containers and then I freeze it. So everything goes into freezer containers and everything gets frozen. So I prepare my meat like that. Poultry is done the same way. The turkey is done the same way. And it adds, it, um, what happens with adding the water is it's going to extract the fat out of the meat. So the lamb and the buffalo, it's going to extract that fat out. And even your chicken and your turkey, the turkey you see it, the chicken you don't see anything, just the broth. But if you do this, try this, and you will see it will extract that fat out. And it tastes delicious. You can season it, season your meat, you know, when you put it in there and go ahead and still put the water. But it will make a world of difference. And your little gallbladder and liver, which mine and stomach and everything, will thank you. So if you have any issues with your gallbladder and liver like I do, you will be, you'll notice a big improvement with that as well. My fish, I do the same thing with my fish. And this is how I do my fish. And it may go against all, you know, package directions. But I've been doing it and I'm, I mean, I'm a really, really careful, careful person and um, with bacteria and all that kind of thing. So I take the fish frozen out of the package and um, like if the whiting comes with like two or three pieces in the package and it's all frozen. So I put it in the dish and I don't, I don't cook a nonstick at all. So I put it in this like a ceramic dish. So I put it in the dish and I cover it with purified water and I leave it sit on the counter and until that fish 
falls out, okay, which takes, depending on the thickness of the fish, it can take anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. Yes, sometimes they tell you put it in the fridge. If you put it in the refrigerator, it's going to take you hours, hours to thaw that fish out that way. So I've been doing it this way. It hasn't killed me yet. It hasn't, I've got no, no harmful effects. Okay, now I'm not going to tell you do this. I'm just saying this is what I do. But if any of this you want to, you know, give it a try, you're, you're on your own, okay? But um, follow the package instructions from the manufacturer, from the producer, whatever. And then, okay, then I dump that water off. Okay, so this is the important part. I put a, use a fork, I stab up the fish with a fork so it doesn't fall out of the dish. I dump that water off, I rinse it in the dish, then I put fresh purified water, just about... I don't even know, a quarter of an inch, maybe half an inch of water, in with the fish, put the lid on it, goes into the oven for 25 minutes on 400. Okay, this is this is my whole program here. I'm just giving you the whole program. And um, I stay, now I'm at, at me, I'm five foot six. I'm just now getting to 120 pounds, and I'll tell you how that happened, how I was able to go from 113 to 120 pounds and this is the first time I've been able to do this, and it was all thanks to my dietitian. Bless her little heart. And um, so I think that's good. Okay, now where are we? Okay, so the fish. Okay, so I've got all the meats covered. I got all the, the um, legumes covered, and now the egg, amaranth, butternut squash. This is how I make my recipe. Okay, so I take two organic eggs, vegetarian, free range, whatever is the best that I can find, and I take two eggs. I rinse the egg outside with water first, and then I dry it with paper towel. Then I crack it open, put it in the bowl, you know, beat them really good, and then take a cup of amaranth flour, a half a teaspoon, is it a half a teaspoon or a quarter teaspoon? I think I use an eighth, maybe it is, all right. It's either a quarter teaspoon or a half a teaspoon. I'm not sure, quite sure. I'll have to look at the measuring. Um, and then... Um, Probably two tablespoons of butternut squash, which I get it in the can. It's organic, and that's, I, that's the best way I like it. And um, I don't use any salt, and I put in probably two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Okay, and then I mix all that together really, really good. You could put your oil in with the egg, and then, you know, after you beat the egg, then put the oil in, then put your butternut squash in. Then put your flour in, then put your tablespoon, uh, tablespoon, your quarter teaspoon of your baking soda. I don't use powder, soda. And I use gluten-free baking soda from Bob's Red Mill. And then mix all that together. Okay, so it's going to be real pasty. Then you're going to go over and get your purified water. And I'd probably say get like a half a cup. Boy, it's so windy today. I wish you could see this. And then it's um, add, add your water until you're just getting it to be like, um pancake batter but not quite as runny just a little bit you know less runny than pancake batter now I get two oval casserole dishes that are glass I oil the bottom I put a little bit of the amaranth flour in and you know get it all oiled and floured then I divide that amount I pour half in to each of the dishes they go in a 350 degree oven for 35 minutes comes out beautiful. I let it rest for 10 minutes when it comes out, and then I comes out of the little glass dishes very easily. I, I take one out, and I scrape all the flour off the back and do that to both of them. I put it on my plate, I cut it up into pieces, and I use a fork because I doctor said don't eat with your hands, and um, then I pour olive oil over all that bread to because I can't use any kind of thing I, that's all I can use is olive oil I, I can't use butter anymore dairy I can't use that is just let's not even get into that <laughs> so thank thank goodness I can use olive oil so I just put the olive oil on again and then that's what I how I eat that so how I was able to gain weight because there's these are all the foods that I can eat this is it right here in a nutshell I cannot eat fruit yet because I have a blood sugar issue so it was very difficult to figure out how was I going to be able to gain weight. And I, in fact, I was losing instead of gaining. So I finally, going from person to person to person, and finally decided, okay, I'm going to just get with another dietitian, call my doctor's office, and it's free through the insurance. So that's about all I use them for. And, um, so, and I can have appointments with her multiple times. There's no limit on that. 
And so she said, if you can increase, I needed to, I was at 1500 calories a day. I needed to get up to 18 to 2000 calories a day for five foot six to be able to gain a half a pound a week. And so she said, if you can increase the foods that you can eat, just increase wherever you can. And if I could increase the olive oil, one tablespoon, just try one tablespoon, increase that. But try to make sure I get two tablespoons a day. And I said, oh boy, this is going to be difficult because I, you know, I didn't want the olive oil to revolt on me. And then I'm, I, I'm going to be on the rotation with it. So, so far, so good. And um, so I just do the two tablespoons every morning. Some mornings I try, I skip if I just really don't think I have the stomach for it that morning. And I mix it in with the beans really, really good. So it does make it really nice. And um, I did that. And then on the bread, I started doing that. So I added the extra um, on the bread. And I added on the fish when it comes out of the oven, probably about a tablespoon. I just pour it on a little bit. I cook my sweet potato in the pressure cooker. And then I just, uh, do like a, like a, almost like a twice bake thing. I take my frying pan, I put olive oil, and then I just kind of like brown one side. And then when it comes off, that's it. I don't add any more olive oil, but it's, it's been cooked in the olive oil. And so that's what I did. And then just like she said, I started gaining a half a pound a week. It was just absolutely glorious. I have to get another appointment with her so I can thank her. And then I added in this brown rice pasta and the yellow squash. So this is the only other thing I was going to tell you. What I do with my yellow squash is after I cook it, I take the seeds out of the middle and I put it in the blender. I take the broth that I cooked the pasta, I mean the yellow squash in. And I probably add, because I you take two yellow squash, okay, and then once you take the seeds out, it, you know, they don't have hardly anything. And then I take, so two of them, and I put it in the blender, I cut it up into about one inch sections, put a little bit of the cup about, maybe a cup of that liquid that I cooked them in, put the two tablespoons of olive oil in, put it in the blender, blend it up, and then I make my brown rice pasta, and I pour that liquid vegetable over it. That's delicious. So this is how I've been able to get my food to be more tasty because let me tell you, if you just eat plain old zucchini and plain old yellow squash, it's disgusting. <laughs> so, And the oatmeal, what I do with the zucchini, and who would have thought that, you know, with no cinnamon, no honey, no butter and oatmeal, no, no milk, it's terrible. But so to make it pal palatable, I cook the oatmeal, which is gluten-free, organic from Bob's Red Mill, and... I won't even tell you how much oatmeal I eat. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it. And um, then I take two zucchini. I do the same process that I do with the yellow squash here, taking the seeds out. But I don't blend it in the blender. So what I do is after the zucchini's cooked, it's in a bowl waiting for the oatmeal to cook. And I don't use the quick cooking oats. I do it on the stove. And then I add two tablespoons of olive oil when it's cooking. And then the zucchini. And then I mix it all up. So the zucchini is soft and then it just all mixes and breaks down. You know, it's not invisible, you know, where you don't know it. And believe it or not, it tastes really good. So, <laughs> and I do add a smidgen of salt, just a tiny pinch of uh, Mediterranean uh, sea salt to that. So there you have it. In a nutshell, that is Marsha's diet and how she's able to gain a half a pound a week and uh, five foot six. So your calorie... And what you eat is what makes all the difference in the world of how much weight you're going to, how much you're going to weigh. And if you're a person who has a tendency to gain a lot of weight, you have to look at your diet and you have to say, what am I eating? What is causing all the weight gain? If you don't, if you're not happy with it, if you don't want to be fat, if you don't like, if you're, it's making you uncomfortable, how you feel with your body. I've weighed 170 pounds before Lyme disease. I know what it's like. I didn't like it. <laughs> and so, um... It was uncomfortable. I'll just tell you, it was uncomfortable. So I'm hoping to get to 138. That's my ideal weight for my bone structure and height. And um, anyway, but thank you so much for being here with me. I hope this was helpful to you. I hope you got some tips out of this. Pause the video, write down things, give some of this a try, and then let me know in the comments what you learned from this, what you liked from this, and... Um, if you're a new subscriber, then please let me know that as well. Thank you so much. And if you'd like to join my DIY uh, handmade gift um, guide series over at Markets of Sunshine and how to be an Etsy seller, turning your hobby into making a little bit of pocket money, and you want to get into a DIY group on Facebook, then um, head over to Markets of Sunshine channel 
subscribe and then you'll watch one of my videos and all that information will be in the description box and I will put all that in the description box below. So thank you so much and I hope you have a great sunshine day. Bye-bye.